hit, but almost <laughs> Marco it is. Has he? Oh, what a goal! Jolly got the tap, oh, he sped it out to Selwood straight away, off to Farco. Farco can go all the way, runs to 45, Travis Farco! Oh, what a start for the Cat! And the Cats have a run on here, Johnson back inside, 50, dangerous for three goals within 60 seconds. Farco has the shot, they don't take long to kill you. In front, Ace, just going to dump this one down the line, can Farco get a play on it? Out the back, here is Trav Varco. Nice pick up. He's a chance. He looks in board now to size to have a shot of the goal. Nice. Can Varco yeah. slide it through? What a magic moment for Travis Varco. Hi, guys. Um, we're here with uh, Travis Varco, current Collingwood player. Debuted in 2007, played 228 games, 138 of those at Geelong, 171 career goals, and two time Premiership player. You're a very decorated player, Travis, and we're ecstatic to have you here, so we welcome you. Yeah, thank you very much. Thanks for having me, guys. No worries. So we're going to jump straight into questions, if that's all right. So we understand that you debuted at age 18, nearly 19. What was it like making the switch to the AFL in terms of the speed and the intensity of the league? Yeah, uh, so my first year at um, uh, Geelong, um, I actually had a broken, broken foot, so... Um, I missed um, a fair chunk of footy in 2006. Um, I probably came back um, the back end of the VFL um, season. Um, played about eight games. So at that stage, I'd, um, I'd missed about a year of footy. Um, so um, it was just sort of a no normal pace to sort of pick it up, um, the VFL level, and then went away for um, the off-season and then just came back and trained, trained hard and, um, I guess having that um, pre-season under my belt, um, training alongside you know, seasoned AFL players probably um, broke that wall a little bit for me and um, I was able to um, pick up the speed um, a little bit little bit quicker than what I thought I'd, I would. Um, and then obviously having a little bit of pace on your side um, probably makes it just that tad bit easier. Um, uh, along with a little bit of, I guess, um, footy now. So um, it wasn't, um, it's still, it was still pretty hard. Um, I'm not going to say it was easy, but um, yeah. I, I guess I had a little bit more of a jump on um, other other players that were in that, in that same position. Yeah. So what's it like getting your name called out to finally get your debut in AFL footy? Yeah, I, I just remember Bomber Thompson um, just calling me into his office and say, um, hey, congratulations, you're going to play. And um, yeah, it was, it was just awesome to be able to ring, ring my dad and, um, you know, tell him that he's, he's going to be coming over to, to watch my first game. And um, had uh, both, uh, both my sisters there. And um, unfortunately, my brother couldn't make it. But he was um, he was doing some rep footy back at home, yeah. back home in Adelaide. So um, good reason to miss, but um, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, it was it was nice to have him there. Yeah. Uh, we we realise you've had really good recent success at Collingwood, um, but we'd love to know um, what it was like playing along such a decorated bunch in the for Geelong in the 2007 to 2011 period, of course. Yeah, it was um, it was pretty surreal to be honest. Um, and to um, look at that side and see your name chucked up alongside, um, you know, our forward line was um, like Cam Mooney, Tom Hawkins, Steve Johnson, Paul Chapman, Shannon Burns, Matty Stokes. Um, I get pretty um, pretty embarrassed to get chucked up against those names, but um, you know, it's um, I was pretty pretty fortunate. Um, and then sort of my last, you know few years at the club I got to play in the back line so I got to play along alongside Matty Scala, Darren Milburn, Corey Ann Wright, um, mm. Andrew Mackey, Josh Hunt, um, Tom Monaghan, um, James Kelly. So um, again, pretty embarrassed to <laughs> put my name up alongside those guys. But um, you know, they taught me um, a, a lot and um, the right way to play footy and um, you know I'm forever grateful for you know, to, to be able to, um, you know, land in such a good team at a, a you know, at a young age. Um, so, 
Um, like I said, yeah, it's pretty embarrassing to put your name up against those guys, but um, you know, I'm very grateful at, at the end of the day. Yeah. As a Geelong fan, um, I tend to watch the 2011 Grand Final a lot, and I can't help but think that um, you were in the running for Norm Smith, um, but James Martell got in the end. Uh, what do you think about <laughs> your chances of getting it? Oh, nah. Next, yeah, I was, I was buckling to get that, but um, and, you know, and at the end of the day, like you know, it's it's nice that um, you know, I don't know, if, I don't even know if my name was chucked up or not, but um, you know, it, it'd be nice to be part of the team success and be named the, I guess, judge the best of field. But um, for me, um, still, it's a team game and. That's that's what we do it for, you know. Wait, the, the the day one when you walk through a preseason, it's you want to play finals and you want to win premierships, and um, yeah, it was just nice to be there and um, be on the on the winning side of it. Sure. Yeah, I just want to talk about um, just following the recent events of the Indigenous round, and of course, you being Indigenous. I just want to know what um. What's the significance of the round to you? Yeah, it's it's um it's massive for, for me. It's one that I sort of pencil in at the start of the year, and um, unfortunately for me, um, the last I think the last three or four years I've missed. Um, I've either been suspended or um or injured, which is um you know pretty heartbreaking because it's um one that I actually do pencil in at the start of the year and um and, and work towards. Um, but for me. It's it's just about acknowledging the past um, and celebrating, you know, our culture, um, not only as footy players but as people. And um, AFL has been massive, massive driving tool in breaking down um, so many barriers, and um, they've been at the forefront of, of leading, um, you know, Indigenous affairs as well. So um, it's nice to be able to run out um knowing that you know every game i'll take my family out there with me um in, in the back of my mind but um it just has a bit extra bite to it for me so um and and i guess you're not just just playing for your own community back at home but you know everyone all around so um and i guess the microscope just goes a little bit more um onto the, the indigenous boys but like i said at the end of the day we're, we're in a team sport and um, without the team around me um, to support me to do what I do and um, back me in with every decision that I make um, off the field as well. Um, yeah, I can't be um, grateful enough. Um, due to the recent circumstances, you know, of the world, the uh, Dreamtime game this year was held in Darwin. Uh, I just want to know your thoughts on that and do you reckon... Um, in the future, do you reckon the Dreamtime game should be continued to be played at Darwin? Um, yeah, that's, a, that's an interesting one. Um, it was awesome to see um, the people in the crowd, see how it's um, joy and, and the smile, um, smiles that are bring to everyone up there. But um, I guess when you sort of um, look at it, uh, Darwin and, and the NT of given us so many great players over the, um, over the journey. And, um, yeah, it's, it's a tough one to sort of debate, but, um, yeah, who knows? Who knows what it, what will hold? Like, uh, I never thought, um, you know, that game would be played outside of the G. And I never thought, you know, we'd be talking about playing a grand final outside of the MCG. But this year has chucked up so many different challenges and um, scenarios that, We've been forced to sort of think about these sort of things, and um, <clears throat> the AFL have, you know, there's a lot of work that goes into planning all these um, games and and blockbusters that um, that plan has sort of been taken away, and they've done an absolutely amazing job at keeping it on track. And um, who knows? I think the feedback was pretty overwhelming to, um, you know, to have it up there. But um, I guess then too, you know, with the how many people, you know, I'm sure the whole the whole territory would love to go along and watch that game, but wouldn't have the capacity to, to hold them. So, um, 
there's there, there's a bit of um, yeah, which way do you want to go with it? So um, yeah, who knows? So I'm, I'm not sure. What did you guys think of it? I th- I'm an Essendon supporter, so I thought it was great just seeing you know Irving Mosquito kick his first goal and the whole crowd sort of erupt. And I just thought the smile that he had on his face and the whole crowd overall was just an awesome experience. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, um, I personally I mean, loved it. Oh, now you go, Sandy. You go. You. Oh, all right. I I I loved it. Um, the crowd. You could tell they were like they were loving it as well. It was everyone was happy. Uh, it was just it put a smile on my face. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, being of um somewhat, I'm indigenous myself, so um just you know seeing that the AFL can sort of give back to the indigenous players in a way, being able to put on a show for people who wouldn't really necessarily be able to go to a game. Um, to, you know, have the experience of an AFL game, I feel is, um, yeah, special for them as well as the players. Yeah, absolutely. Um, just on, like, the current circumstances of the AFL, um, what is, like, hub life like? And do you reckon that it's had an impact on your season, uh, this season? Yeah, it's, um, it's an interesting one. It's, um, you know, some, some of the boys thrive in it. Um, you know, not having that um, really regimented, structured um, system that we're used to um, with a normal season. And, um, yeah, I, I think without the families um, here, it makes it pretty tough. Um, you know, I'm lucky enough to have my family here. And um, at the end of the day, we all have a safety net that we sort of lean back on and, you um, for the majority of the boys, you know, your partners, you know, your kids, your family are the ones that you, you tend to lean back on. And um, some of those boys don't have that here. And um, it, may, it does make it pretty difficult. But um, like I said, it's it's not like we're the only ones going through it. Um, and, and to be honest, you know, everyone back in Victoria, um, we are pretty fortunate to be you know, doing our job and um, being able to play a sport that we love to give, you know, other people joy as well. You know, we could be on the other end and not have a job at all. And so we, we are pretty grateful at, at, at the same time too to to be able to live not life as normal as possible. Because, um, yeah, we, we do, our hearts do go out to, you know, the families that are doing it pretty tough back at home. So, as you mentioned before, you sort of made that switch from a forward and rotating midfield role um, to sort of half back, and you provide that run, as we saw last night against North, providing that run for Collingwood. What was that switch like, making that switch from forward to back? Yeah, I've always liked playing um, half back and um, having the game in front of you and. Um, being able to see things unfold in front of you. Like, I, I've always enjoyed that part of the game. And um, and I thought last year, or probably the last two years, I've sort of been trying to get back to playing at halfback. And um, Nathan, you know, I had a conversation with Nathan at the end of um, last year to um, put my views forward that, you know, I've, I think I'd be a bit more beneficial to to the side um, behind the ball, and um, and that's not an easy conversation either because he liked me in front of the ball, and um, yeah, he's, he's provided me an opportunity to um, stimulate, stimulate me in a different way um, with footy and um, challenge me in different ways. So um, I do enjoy enjoy it back down there, and um, but having said that, though, it's if the team needs you out forward, then um, so be it, and that's where that's where I'll play. So um, no one's ever bigger than the than the team or the club. Um, but yeah, you, you hope that you do something special that leaves a you know a pretty big legacy or or a mark on the club that um, you know in, when younger generations come through that they can um, pick up something from from you or from it from that you know a team that's done something special or you know, a team that's nearly got there and, um, yeah, so there's always, there's always things to learn, but, um, yeah, 
um, I didn't find the transition um, overly hard because I've got such great people to learn off. Uh, yeah, just speaking about that legacy that you've you've uh, been wanting to to forge, you, you've definitely done that through playing um, in a series of grand finals, and and you have a knack made of just of just um, performing in these big games over and over again. Can you talk us through um, what it's like in the in the in the um, in the lead up to the grand final and, and how you sort of prepare yourself mentally and physically um, heading into such a big game. Yeah. So you are you meaning like leading in from like the start of the week? Or from the start like of the week, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just yeah. leading into into the grand final. Yeah. So early days, I just um, I sort of took my cues off of um, the older boys around me, and um, they didn't seem to be too too fast. Um, they uh, they look like they wanted to be there and enjoyed um, such a big occasion that um, I just thought that was just normal. So I sort of just carried on like um, nothing really, like if that makes sense. Like it was just sort of like, okay, it's just another game. Let's just, let's just get in. Let's prepare as normal as possible. Um, given that grand final weeks is, is just a, a different kettle. Of fish. It's just a bizarre um, lead in um, because you don't get people in watching your, train you don't get um you know a grand final parade and all that sort of stuff you know you got to we stayed in melbourne the night before um if you wanted to so like those things don't normally happen but um yeah i just sort of just took it um like yeah it's just another game um obviously there's bigger stakes involved and um jimmy bartell and i used to have, like because our lockers used to be two lockers away we just had the saying that it was just like juniors just a bigger crowd and um for me every time he said that to me it was just well yeah that's why you play because you love it and you you enjoy it so um leading up it was yeah it was obviously a little bit different with the people there watching training but um once it got to game day it was just all right what does the coach want you to do let's go and execute it as best as we can um and if and we're we we're pretty solid on staying the course. And if we did that longer and harder for the for the um, against the opposition, um, generally um, the results came our way. And um, yeah, fortunately for us, um, the, yeah, I played in two of them that that went our way. Yeah, just to uh, just to end. Um on a, on a high note, uh, just, uh, you know, you've had such a great career and of course it's still going, but uh, I just want to know what are some of your top three moments? If you can think of any. Top over three. There. Yeah. Um, I think my top, my top one would be first game. Um, cause you'll never ever play a first game ever again. Um, so I think that was, um, all the sacrifices as a, you know, a young kid, you could get caught up with your mates, um, you know, when you're 16, 17, 18, thinking you know the world and, you know, they're out having a good time or, um, you know, going to parties or whatnot. Like, that, all those sacrifices sort of was, was worth it and um, the, the pre-season and the hard running and the weights and all the tapes and education that you put yourself through, um to to get yourself ready and you're only scraping the surface when you you know played your first game there's so much more ahead of you that you got to learn and got to um build on you know not just with your game but you know your body your physique um it was just yeah it was just nice to know that that little bit of hard work that you'd put in um not just at Geelong, but leading into the draft, um, sacrificing those little things, um, was, it was worth it. So that's, that's going to be my number one. Um, and then I think number two would be my 200th. Um, I had, I've got, we had a win against Port Adelaide and, um, it was, you know, a couple, family members that are no longer with us now that we were able 
to come and watch me. So that's uh, that's probably my my number two and. Um, yeah, I guess number three, you could probably just juggle juggle between um, probably the grand final wins and even though that we lost 2018 was probably grand final was um, was a highlight. I, I know it's pretty bizarre to say that, you know, you lost one, but um, that was just such a big year um, for me personally and um, probably given the grand finals in the past 10 years or so, I don't think we'd seen a closer one um, for a long time. So, um, yeah, on the on the other end of it, um, which is a bit sour, but um, as a sporting spectacle, um, yeah, unreal game. Um, just to, to finish off, mate, um, it's an interesting one. You know, you've, you've sort of been... Um, a part of some great success over the, over the whole of your career, actually, um, at AFL level. What's it like going from playing in front of, you know, 70-odd thousand um, week in, week out to sort of coming to this year and just having no fans at all? What's it been like? Has it had an effect on, on uh, the team's performance or anything like that? No, I think, um, I think it was pretty bizarre at the start. Um, but it's, it's sort of, um, it's, it's no different to training, to be honest. Like, um, and, and just your, your voice and instructional, you know, your direction on the ground um, is just a lot more clearer. Um, so, you know, when you're getting, you know, up to the, you know, high 70s, 80,000s, it can, it can really be hard to hear um, with all the white noise. So, um, yeah, it's um, to be honest, I don't really want to be playing in front of no crowd for much longer um, because it does. You feed off the crowd, you love it, you see how much they enjoy it, um, and it does. Like it's it's one thing um, that I've always looked forward to when I when I play is to run out at the start and just hear the roars or the boos or whatever it is. It it actually it's it's um, you, you become accustomed to when you when you're playing um, at that level, and um, yeah, at the start it was pretty bizarre, but I think for this year it's just become the norm, and um, yeah, it, it is what it is, and yeah. hopefully we don't have to do it for too much longer because um, yeah, yeah, that's what um, that's what drives me when I get out there is, is hearing that. Yep. Well, Travis, that wraps up all our questions. We really appreciate your time here um, and, you know, coming off a big win yesterday um, and now joining us here. It means a lot to us as we are big fans, especially Josh as a Geelong supporter. Um, but, yeah, no, we thank you for your time and we wish you all the best for the rest of the season. Uh, too easy. Thanks, guys. Appreciate thank it. You so much. Thank no you. Worries. Thanks, Travis. Here's Marco. First oh. kick in league football. He slotted it. Not a great kick. Coming in from the right there. There he is. Didn't get a run at it then. Frost was able to get a fist on it. Off hands. Farco gets a really clean look. Geelong have got two openers. Stokes went to ground. And now Farco can back his pace. Will he share it? No. Does it himself. Lewis to Franklin. And away he goes. And what a sign he is. There is nothing better than that, but he's mown down. Oh, Farco, how good is that? He's Big ball to win here, and Shuey wins it. Has a bounce, look at Barco, come at him, got him! Oh, magnificent try, Barco! That's his second run down tackle like that tonight.